everybody, hello, uh, Galaxy here, and welcome back to another episode of Cozy Corner. A series I... A series where I play dating sims, visual novels, and anything that just... A little relaxing cord cording. Any little cozy game, I guess. Today we are playing Crim Crimson Waves on the Emerald Sea. This is a visual novel game I found through a TikTok. Uh, the TikTok was by its actual game creator, and yeah, I just thought we'd try it out. Oh, here we go. Uh, you guys can see this. Okay, let's start. Chapter 1. Physics and char charlatans? Charlatans. Visit corner. Reconnect with uh or psych no psychic. Okay. Sorry guys. Uh, as you guys know, I'm dyslexic and if this is your first time seeing me, yes, I am very dyslexic and I have a very hard time pronouncing things. I am sorry. So enjoy the ride. Uh psychic corner, reconnect with loved ones across time and space. Can they really help me find her? Oh! Oh, Mon... Mon... Monsieur? Monsieur? Are you by chance in need of something? Perhaps searching for something? How did you know? My name is... Carmelia. Carmilla. I see all. I know all. Come in. My next session is about to start. Uh, okay. The dark and interior of the shop sm smells strongly of frankincense. At best, it's overwhelming. At worst, it's completely nauseating. A group of downtrodden town folk and travelers are scattered around the room, keeping to themselves as, as a well-dressed man walks around talking to people. Gentlemen, hello there, young mons monsieur. I, I feel like that's how you pronounce that. I am sorry. It's so rare to see such a young child with us. May I ask why you're paying us a visit here today? I I'm looking for my neighbor. She's my best friend in the world. Oh my, how sad. What has happened to her? About a week ago, she ran away from home and didn't tell me where or why. So now I'm looking for her. How noble of you, young Monsia. But Miss Camellia's aid, I'm sure you'll find her. Thank you. The gentleman walks away and starts conversing with a woman with a, with a handkerchief in her hands for her tears. After a few moments, Miss Camellia, Carmilla, Carmilla, I don't know, I'm bad with names, Miss Carmilla walks in the room and motions for us to follow her down a dark corridor into a candlelit chamber. Come, let us all sit and show respect for the spirits here with us today. Spirits? Uh, like, ghost? For today's session, I ask you all for patience and guidance. The spirits uh, are all around us and sometimes are disoriented. Sometimes the words they tell me are meant for others in the room or need more clarification that you can help me with. So please treat me as a vessel for thoughts and help me translate them for you. In fact, I'm hearing some words right now. A sudden death, leaving a widow behind. Oh, how tragic. The woman who had been crying into her handkerchief in the lobby raises her hand, raises her head. This man left the world all too soon, and his bet betrothed wife cannot move on yet. I believe his wife is here in the audience with us, aren't you? Y yes my husband passed away recently. He is in the room with us. Some people ought to be the gas at her words. He's here? Mm-hmm, I see. 
Oh dear, you tried your best, didn't you? Caring for him even in his thickness. Uh, yes, he suddenly came down with an illness. Before I knew it, he... He said he couldn't help you any longer, but even more saddened to see you in such a state. He wishes you well and hopes you will move on, that you'll keep living in his memory. Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, he's too kind, even now. The woman starts sobbing into her handkerchief again, trying her best to maintain some composure. Amazing. I'm overjoyed I could help deliver such a happy message. Even across the valley, who receive and deliver such messages. Now, what is the next message? She closes her she closes her eyes and starts muttering a chant to herself. I'm hearing a name. So many names at once. This will be difficult. Something that starts with a R, maybe an M. Man across the table from her Taurus perks up. An M name? Yes, a name that starts with an M. Perhaps Matthew? Maybe a Michael? Hmm, Mark? Michael, yes. Ah, he's so close to you, isn't he? A brother? No. Your son? I yes! My son, Michael. What a tragic death, I can tell. Gone far before his time. It was an accident, wasn't it? Yes, our son died in childbirth not long ago. It wasn't your fault. Nothing you could have done would have prevented this. Your son wants you to move on from this. The spirits are telling me your next child will live past childbirth. Really? Thank you. Thank you so much. The Esper gracefully, the Esper gracefully dips her head with a condal smile as the other guests clap. Well, she's able to communicate with the dead and tell the future. Let us have a moment of silence while the spirits speak to me about our next guest. Hmm, yes. Oh, how my heart aches at hearing this. A missing friend. Huh? A young child, a young girl, perhaps. Let me listen to the spirit. To the spirit, a moment longer. Yes, a young girl, perhaps a sister. No, a close friend. Yes, I'm looking for my best friend. Ah, uh, how sweet. You run away from home to look for your dear friend. I'm not a runaway, I'm an orphan. Mm. Your friend is somewhere far away from here. It'll take you a while. It will take you a while to find her. The spirits tell me you'll find her, but she'll be resistant to to going home. Why? That is all the spirits are telling me at this moment. I can tell you though that you will find her safely. I'll find her. I'm going to find Lucy. Camilla, Camilla, Car Carmilla straightens her shoulders and starts muttering more chants, bringing everyone back to focus on her. Hmm, the spirits are getting more active now. My, even more clear, perhaps. This is a woman, a beautiful young woman. They are telling me she has a lover, or maybe someone who'd like to be. A young man sits up, now alert. Her name's alerting me, though. I'm hearing many, many names right now. Josephine, Julia, Guinevere. Ah, uh, does she has, does she have several middle name, names, perhaps? My girlfriend. Ah, uh, of course. Your girlfriend. The spirits are telling me you are troubled about your relationship. Yes, I've been thinking of proposing to her. Her family is opposed, aren't they? 
But the spirits also tell me you are, you are having your own problems with her, aren't you? Yes, when I brought up the idea of us getting married, she started growing distant. Why? Hmm. She closed her eyes once more to chant. I fear she may have found someone else, someone her family is more privy of. <gasps> she doesn't want to upset you, but she wants to be with someone of a higher social status. It would be best to move on. I'm sorry for this turn of events. Hmm. <laughs> the man chuckles to himself. Ah, I guess it's good it was never serious then. In fact, I'm glad she doesn't even exist. Well, whatever do you mean? I'm saying none of that is true. Your cold reading is decent, but it gives your uh, it careens when someone gives your assistant fake information. <laughs> you gather basic information based on how they look. A woman alone in black crying is most likely mourning for her husband, and then get your assistant to find further details. For the people your assistant doesn't have time to get to, you start making general guesses and home in on details depending on their responses. It's easy for you to take money from people in agony, isn't it? Woman. Is this true, madam? This was all fake? Uh, of course not. Timothy, escort this charlatan out. Is the, is the pot calling the kettle black when pushed into a corner? What a farce! I knew you shouldn't have come here! The green man escorts his wife, now sobbing out into the lobby. Wait, wait! I could deliver more message for you from beyond! The lies are only soothing. The lies are only soothing when they think they are true. Out! Out! The lot of you! Uh, why me too? Why? I could see myself out! The young man lies. <laughs> the young man lies flat on the pavement. Too little, too late though. As behind him, the other guest fouled out, out of the establishment. Hmm. What do I do now? I was going to ask her where Lucy, Lucy might be. Hmm. What's that guy looking my way for? Hey, kid. You should be more careful about where you go. They're... <laughs> they're con artists like that all over nowadays. His clothes are dirty, and he talks with such an accent. And look at all the, the women he made cry. I don't trust him one bit. Then why'd you stop by? He pulls out a coin and flips it. Payday! <laughs> A local gave me some spare change to defraud them. Uh, so you really don't care, do you? Care about what? Not letting vulnerable people hear false promises? Those people coming here, who've lost people, who had them taken away from them, they're not going to get closure like this. They're gonna keep going back, hoping to hear more false words from the ones they lost. And those leeches will keep taking our money. When you reach that stage, all you want is five more minutes with them. But that five minutes will never be enough. They're not giving them hope. They're prolonging their grief and profiting from it. Mm. The other visitors have mostly left, but I can still but I can still see the grieving widow sobbing into her handkerchief. She just wanted to hear from her husband one more time. And I, I want, and I, I just want to find Lucy. How you do it then? Do what? Tell it was bull? It's not that hard to read people and make generalizations about them. You, though, you're an open book to read cold. Wh what does that mean? Let's see. You're about, what, 12? 13? You said you were looking for a friend, right? You only recently started looking for her, maybe in the past day or two. 
You're from nearby. You don't get out much. After all, you're from a rich family. Probably not an elbow, though. Newer money, maybe? Mm. I'm an orphan. Not in those clothes, you're not. After, after just a couple of nights of sleeping outside, you'll get dirt, dirt on your clothes. After several weeks, your boots will be scuffed. Will get scuffed. But look at you. You look like you just stepped out of a tailor. He, he's going to turn me in. He, he's going to turn me in for being a runaway. I, I've got to get away. Hey, where do you think you're going? Um, away, away from you. Bye bye. I can't go home until I find her. Then we can go home together. I. I don't want to go home until then. <sighs> did, did I outrun him? Hmm? Who, who's there? <laughs> Kids shouldn't be running around on their own. Hiya, folks. These guys look even shadier than that lot back there. Move aside. I haven't had fresh blood in a while. Such a scrawny kid. The hell do. Mm. Vampires! Father always said there's nothing worse than a vampire. Someone who has become a ghoul. Now, but now, what what do I do? Come on, a little blood won't kill ya. If you don't struggle. The vampire snatches my arm. <laughs> The hell was that? What, what was that? It was some kind of flash. It was some kind of flash when he touched my arm. Darn it! See, this is why you shouldn't run off. Go to a blood bar if you're thirsty. You're not getting any blood here. That way you think? Looks like I'll have two meals today. Bladers, you got a gun. Move aside, kid. Ooh. I really do like this art. With a shove, I landed on the dirt a few feet behind the man as he brandishes a gun at the vampires. The flashes from the gun's muzzle are about all I can make out in the chaos. The man seems unfazed and keeps knocking the vampires to, to the ground before they can get a hit in. A sheave almost hits the man's shoulder. Almost. He topples one vampire down by knocking their legs down by shooting at another. There's no blood. What's he shooting them with? Another strike, another hit. Try as they might, the vampires can't seem to get a hit on them, young man. Ugh. Hmm? The head vampire lunges at the man and tackles him to the ground. Even after two shots to the chest, the man can't shake him. But wait! I run past the running vampires on the ground to get the man, to get to the man and the leader. It might not be much, but I've got to do something. I use my weight to shut the leader off the man, but he, but he is quick to his feet again. Just a minute ago, he looked mostly normal. And now there's a visible bloodlust in his demeanor. Get out of my way! He tears past the man and forces right back on me. Hey, get, get away from me! The guy just won't. This guy just won't stop. I try to kick him away, but he's unfazed and only comes closer. Instinctively, I throw my hands up to defend myself. That, that flash again! Why is there a reaction when I touch him? Kid! Are you alright? Yes. What was that flash? Around us, the vampire gang is laid out on the ground. Looks like the leader here turned enraged at the thought of fresh blood. A little too common, honestly. Thanks. <laughs> what was that? I, I said thank you. 
I guess a rich kid like you doesn't have much to thank others for, huh? Mm. You lads are right! A group of coppers mounted to us, waving their batons. We heard a mighty clamor from the sleigh. Hmm? Johnny, get on your feet! Johnny, get on your feet! Your feet. Johnny, get on your feet! <laughs> the late vampire groans on the ground, while a handful of the cop, while a handful of the coppers start handcuffing the men. Well, it looks like you lot aren't hurt. Hurt, at least. We've been on high alert recently for vampire attacks. Why is that? There's been an increase in them? There's reports of a rash, rash of attacks a couple of cities south of here, Rana, uh, Lammerberg, saying there's some kind of serial attacker at college or something. <laughs> saying there's some kind of serial attacker at a college or something. We'll take these lots in for now. Stay safe out there. Thanks, cop. A series of attacks? That sounds like what Lucy was in, was looking into. Thanks for your help. But I've got to be off now. And where is it that you... And where is that to? To get attacked again? To look for my friend, of course. She's been rather interesting. She's been rather interested in vampire attacks recently. So that might be where she's gone. Mm. It's about time I leave town, too. It sounds like we're heading in the same direction now. I can't have some old guy telling... I can't have some old guy te telling me. That's creepy. I'm barely 23. <laughs> Besides, that's where my partner is. Where your partner in... Uh, what, your partner in crime? No, probably your actually partner in partner. You can't run around on your own, and you'll be shipped back to your estate before you know it. Or worse, some vampire's meal. Mm. The name's Nemo. If you want it, we can travel to Lemon... Lorenberg. Lor Lorenberg. Together. Na names are Names are hard. Pronunciation is hard. English, even though it's my only language I know, is hard. <laughs> what a weird name. The man holds out his hand. Do I... Do I shake this? I'm running low on money. When I tried to board the train, I was turned around until I found my mom. The... The coppers keep looking at me funny. When I try to get my bearings straight. Alright, I'll go with you. I mean, he, he looked, he looks, okay. Bar hopping. Oh, okay. But he, he looks trustworthy to me. I guess, yeah. I've got little money in my pocket. A runaway kid with no common sense. And no way to get the gems I was looking for. And to top it off, I'm already heading home. This week is going swell. If there really is a rash of attacks on campus, then the faster I can get back, the better. Scott might have my neck for running empty-handed, but you'll have to forgive me. Stopping vampire attacks comes before research. Oh, okay, so actually partner in crime, maybe? Me said looking for gems, so alright. Where are we going? <laughs> you made a fuss when I took a couple of bills from that posh. So I thought we'd try something, ah, uh, free. You mean legal. Legal, sure, sure. It's not like that chap's gonna miss a couple bills anyways. How'd you reckon that? It's his money. This is going to be a long week. That to say if we can get to the train fast enough. If you want to do this more fr frugally, then we've got to do some searching. Why a pub? Why a pub? When you want to know something, you go to a pub. Well, you can when you're older. Stay outside for a bit, okay? Someone comes up to you, ignore them, and walk inside. Yes, yes. And don't wander off. Are you going to go yet? 
he ran head first into an alleyway and immediately got jumped by vampires. I can assume you know any I can't assume you know anything about staying safe. Alright, it won't be long. Tavra is in a lull as it's midday. The patrons inside are all in their own corners while the barmaids are getting ready for a long shift as night approaches. Only a handful of women are behind the bar while the rest are cleaning up or walking around in the back. Sasha? Hmm? Nemo, what brings you out this way? Sightseeing, running some errands, the lot. I'm trying to head south. You know anyone heading that way? Ah, I think there was a family leaving out for Ox well today. They were staying at Mar Marie's. They were staying at Maria's Inn. They might still be there. Thank you. I give her a peck on the cheek and walk towards the front door. Next time you're in town, stop by and I might have some work for you. Sure, as long as it's not being a bouncer again. I wave to her and head out. Well, did you find anything? Or, well, did you find something? Does he still have an attitude because I coughed a few bills? There's a family in just south. If we hurry, we might can catch them before they leave town. And steal the carriage. And ask for a ride. I don't steal everything, you know. Hmm. If I remember right, Maria's Inn is only a couple blocks down. If you want to get anywhere free, then you better offer up some physical work in, in return. What does that mean? See, physical labor is when you use your arms and legs to do work, like farming or lifting crates. I know what physical labor is. Then you've got an idea already. Traveling through the countryside isn't as simple as just sitting in the carriage until you arrive. Of course, for you, it probably is, but not for the rest of us. If he fouls any longer, his face will stay that way forever. Maybe he's one of those kids who stays angry until he's fed. You've been out before, haven't you? What do you mean? Of course I've left home before. Alright, alright. Where to? Around town. Ah. D don't act all smug. I've been to town plenty of times. I've even been with Father on his business trips a couple of times. And where was that to? Well, we took a train. Did you ever get off the train? Yes. Pr briefly. Hmm. <laughs> it was somewhere in the mountains. There were trees every which way. I've been places, okay? Okay, okay. But clearly not alone. <clears throat> My maid, Henny, was always with me. Oh, you've got a maid all to yourself? Sh she's the family maid! She just mostly looks after me. What do you think she's doing now? Frantically running around the estate. Don't suppose she'd come looking for you, do ya? Hmm. Sounds like we've got to get a move on then. I'm really liking this so far. Also, I made me some hot hot drink uh to get all cozy with i am drinking a french vanilla cappuccino it's really yummy though i uh may make myself some hot tea next time i've been getting into teas a lot lately um i've been slowly but surely trying a few, quite a few i've like i like more of the fruity ones but I do uh, have these D&D related teas from this tea, uh, tea shop, like online tea shop I like to support, uh, and they're really good, but if any uh, tea drinkers that really like teas are watching this, uh, I don't know, suggest some teas in the comments or something. I, I, I like trying new things. We make our way past the pop-up market on the side of the street. I'd love, an, I'd love an apple right now, but 
I finally got the kid's mind off of my last, uh, pilfering. <laughs> the part of town definitely is more familiar now that, that I'm looking around. It's been a couple years, but it's coming back to me. I haven't, beer I haven't been here since. Hey, mister. You can just call me Nemo, you know. Why are you helping me? Well, it is a fair question, but how do I answer it? You ran away to help someone else. Sure, you seem spoiled as hell, but you're not a spoiled brat. You remind me of, uh... You remind me of my little sister when she was younger. Naive, but earnest. You have a sister? I just had to keep talking, didn't I? Had. Had to. Oh. The kid looks away awkwardly. Well, enough that conversation. Looks like we're here. I point to the building across the street. Somewhat dodgy looking, but well meaning. Well meaning in, run by an older couple. Out in front is the carriage the young man is packing. Ah! And it looks like our ride is still here. What do you plan on doing? Come on. Hey! <laughs> I raise my cap at the man who promptly stops what he's doing to wave our direction. Oh, hello. You look nice. Good day. Can I help you with something? I was actually looking in. I was actually looking if you need help loading. I'd be much obliged. What would it cost us? We we're just looking to travel south of here to get to the train station and and trader. He holds out a hand. Sounds like a deal then. Well, that was easy. Chapter three: A Motherly Touch. Nemo immediately goes to the crates on the ground and starts lifting them like they're nothing. I tried the same thing, but I can't even get one off the ground. Why don't you go sit over there while we do this? He nods over to the front steps at the end where a woman is sitting with a small toddler. <sighs> okay. Aw, aren't you pretty? <laughs> Dress. A little bonnet cap and a little bit of her hair pooping out of it. Ah, good evening. I've I've never actually talked to a lady alone like this. Annie doesn't count. Lucy Lucy definitely doesn't count. I've got to be the perfect gentleman. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Is it Cecil. Cecil. What a nice name. My name is Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth is a pretty name. <laughs> and that's my husband, Eustace. And this little one is Owen. She raises the arm to toddle. She raises the arm of the toddler, who's sitting beside her, causing the child to start giggling. All I do is nod awkwardly. Come here and sit down. Hair's a bit messy. A growing young man should always keep a comb in the back in his back pocket. She strokes her fingers through my hair, attempting to straighten it out. <laughs> I'm just cleaning it up a bit. It's all right. Even if you don't have a home, you should try to keep keep your hair straight. It'll make you feel better. She continues running her fingers through my hair. Her hands are so warm. If you don't have a comb, start running your fingers through your hair from the bottom and work your way up slowly. You'll get more knots out that way. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. She straightens my tie. Do you have any parents? Mm, I can't give her the impression of a runaway, but how do I answer her? Oh, I didn't mean to upset you. She pats my head. No one's done that before. 
Where are you and your brother heading to? Yeah, it, it does look like a... That's probably what the coppers thought, too. Just little boy and his brother. Makes sense. We are not brothers. He... Wait. If they find out we're not related, then they might call the coppers on me. Ah, I'm sorry. Where are you and your friend headed to? We're looking for my friend. She's been missing for a couple weeks now. Oh no, I do hope she's okay. I'll find her, don't worry. She rests her hand on her lap and smiles at me. I'm sure you will. Have you ever been out this way? I haven't. He has, but this place is all new to me. <laughs> Chin up. I bolt up right at her words. You seem so focused on finding your friend. R remember to not lose sight of the road ahead of you. Look around you and enjoy the view. I pray you'll cherish the journey. That should be it. The man dusts off his pants and waves towards us. Beloved, we are done. Let's head out so we can get so we can get a fair way before nightfall. Bumpy ride. The ride is a little bumpy, but it blazes better than going by foot. Cecil looks mildly terrified by the whole we were in a rickety wooden carriage thing. You must be used to those fancy closed carriages. Hmm, maybe I should start a conversation. We don't know anything about the couple, really. Thanks for letting us ride what you do. Thanks for the help loading everything. We were staying in a town. We were staying in town long enough to get my son checked out by the doctor there. So now we're heading home. What brings you to south? We are trying to get home too. Lorenberg, to be exact. Well, my home at least. Lorenberg, I've heard it's beautiful there in fall. It definitely is. Where do you call home? Oxwell, it's quaint compared to Lorenberg, but the countryside is worth it. I have a wonderful workshop there. A shop? You a blacksmith? An inventor? Aww. I like a purple tie. It matches you. It kind of... It, Hey, it actually matches your eyes. What purple, what nice purple eyes. I like everybody's eyes here. They have very pretty, bright contrast compared to the rest of them. Truth be told, I brought a few of my inventions with me to town to find a cellar while we were here. I told you the answer was going to be no. I was multitasking, dear. <sighs> If I had, though, what a wonder. What kind of inventions have you made? What have I made? Would you ask a painter what they painted? I what I have not made. Here, look what... Here, here. Look with your own eyes. The man hurriedly yanked a bag from beneath him and passed it to Cecil. Cecil timidly shifts through the bag, pulling out of rare variety of items to for her inspect carefully. I grab one item to ca that catches my eye. It looks like, well, it's hard to describe. At least with the other items, I could imagine a potential use for them. What's this? That, my boy, is a tool to... Yeah, that, my boy, is a tool to subdue vampires. R really? How good is it? I don't know yet. Soon though, soon I will be able to test it. I just need to find a volunteer. That's not happening. Yeah, um, I, I don't, I, how about test it on like a scarecrow? I test it on a real life vampire man? That doesn't seem very safe. Not with that attitude, it's not. <sighs> In theory, it should work. In theory. Vampires have heightened senses. Not by an outrageous amount, but heightened nonetheless. N nonetheless. 
Most notably, they reportedly have a heightened sense of smell. That this might normally be an advantage to them, but with anything, you can flip an advantage upside down. Overwhelm their senses. Exactly. For us folk in the countryside, it's normal to put up garlic around our doors to ward off vampires. However, it's not the garlic that does the trick. Garlic is something easy to get and very pungent. It won't kill them, but they certainly don't like it. I suppose if you stuff enough of something terribly smelling, it could incapacitate one briefly, especially if they've hit with especially if they're hit with it all at once. Susa looks back and forth at us, wide-eyed. And that's what this item does. Stuff it with garlic, pepper. Stuff it with garlic, peppers, the lot. Close it up and hold it near any vampire coming your way. So garlic, pepper. They want to have that uh, fruit that smells really bad. The exotic fruit, dairy and fruit or whatever it's called. Onions would probably work. Onions. Uh, Onions are smelly, but they kind of get your eyes, like, it's a kind of smell that gets your eyes watering. So that could kind of work, that could work on vampires, yeah, that could just, like, you know, that would make their eyes very much water. <laughs> I mean, yes, they need blood, but they could still cry. The tear ducts are still there. Of course, you sh should only use it against hostile ones, but if they could all manage their tendencies, then we wouldn't need this, now would we? Sadly, true. Have you tried anything else to work against vampires? I have wanted to tinker with the effects of Pacific Gems on, of Pacific gems on them, and how we can do, dilute them, but, well, money is tight. And I'm not giving you my gems for your arts and graphs. I've wondered the same thing. Right now, I'm working with a professor on reaching the effects of precious metals and natural gems on vampires. Some gems definitely hurt her vampires and might kill them, but we haven't narrowed down the list enough. Not exactly easy to, easy or cheap to get gems, you know. Why gems? Why can they hurt vampires? That's harder to say. We can speculate about it, though. Certain gems have been used for millennia for different spiritual uses, like warning off evil. There are gems that hurt vampires, just a small touch is like burning them. Hmm. Some gems have been described for other uses that, than just warding evil. Than just warding evil, though. They might be fairy tales, but we want to try them out. It's a small lead towards the towards a cure to vampirism. A cure? <laughs> a cure to vampirism would be worth more than any gem on earth. Definitely. Can't imagine any worse fate than having to rely on a constant supply of blood and becoming feral if you can't get any. Going into an all-fired rage and attacking anyone near you. Hmm? Sorry, I got a little carried away. So, I'm um, into your sister? Does she have a vampire buddy? Did your sister get mauled by a vampire to death? You mentioned you had a sister. Had being the word here. I'm guessing here. <laughs> Speaking of gems. I pull out my gun and unload a couple bullets. These bullets are made to hunt vampires. They are made of rubber and dipped in liquid liquidated gems. These in particular are aquamarine. Aquamarine marine is very pretty. I've been working with gem um I have a rock I got a rock tumbler for Christmas. I've been working with gems, um well, gemstones, uh really any pretty colorful, shiny object, you know. Gems are pretty. Rocks are pretty. Yeah. 
uh, but when working for with them for my crafts and for uh, my jewelry and stuff, you, uh, if any of you visit my shop, you may in future see some things that have some of the gems I work with in them. Uh, I don't know gem names very well, so I'm, I want to. I, I'll put the ones that I do know in the description of those listings, but the ones I don't know, I'm gonna get. I, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm gonna have to guess. Whoa, so these are what you used to take out those guys. They're really pretty. Since they're bullets, they pack a punch, but they have to touch skin before they're fully effective. It's a beauty for sure. That gun of yours is very ornate. It's ornate too. A family heirloom? Just something I've had for a long time. I took it away before you can expect it anymore. Better safe than sorry. Cecil hands me the bullocks back. Still transfected on them. Does he really like gems? Hey, gems are really pretty. He rubs his eyes and yawns. <laughs> Had a long morning? Sit back and relax. We'll be stopping in a few hours. Chapter 5 The Aquamarine Sky, or That Aquamarine Sky. Here you go. Dwan hands me a pair of blankets. I stare at her blankly. When the man said we'd be stopping here for tonight, it didn't really set in that we'd actually be sleeping out here until now. The man tends to a fire near the wagon. Nemo is a few feet away, setting up another fire. Why are you making another fire? Warmer. I'd rather not sleep so close to strangers. You're free to sleep wherever. Mm. Sakes alive, you're really sleeping outside in the middle of nowhere. Mind handing me one of those blankets? Oh! oh. I was kind of hoping they were both for me. Ever had a sleepover? A what? You know, when you invite people over and sleep on the floor. Why would we sleep on the floor when I have enough beds? He will mutter something under his breath and old unfolds the blanket. Watch how I do this. He holds two of the corners and throws it into the air. Oh, that's what Annie does with the blankets. After you do that, take some loose dirt for a pillow. Or you can use your arm, I guess. Annie would be horrified. What about animals? Eh, the fire should keep most of most animals away. And bugs? You've already got one on you. F where? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, get bugs on you. That's in inevitable. I don't want bugs near me. He storks the fire and sits down on his blanket. I reluctantly take off, take off my shoes and do the same. I guess this is like falling asleep by the fireplace, except more bugs and no plush chairs. Don't sweat it so much. I've slept outside more times than I can count. Are you homeless? <laughs> Do I look that sh disheveled to you? No, my home is in Lorenberg. I'll show it to you when we get home. When we get there. You have family there? Well, it depends on your definition of family. I don't have any blood relatives. N none. None. My mother died at. My mother died in childbirth. My father died in a factory accident a few years ago. After that, I was on my own. The orphanages were glorified prisons for children. I stayed in a couple of them, but were worse than the streets. Overcrowded, hostile. I met all sorts of orphans and runaways back then. Fires, disease, mind collapses, mechanical failures. <sighs> what about you? I don't have any siblings, just my parents. What would it be like to wake up and have another person in the next room over? 
to live with someone else your age. What's so special about this friend of yours? What's special about her? Everything. She, she's like a doll. She always looks so elegant. She's my best friend. We were always, we would always visit each other. We even do some homeschooling work together. There's nothing not to like about Lucy. Lucy, eh? I hope you find her. Thank you. Now get some rest, and try not to turn over into the fire. I'm, I'm not that close to it. Right? Night. Chapter 6, Travelers. Thank you for everything. Have safe travels. You too. Stay safe out there. We waved the family off as they continued down the path, leaving us close to Tradar. What now? We walk. How far? Uh, a few hours. Might have to camp out again. We'll see. We'll see. So we are lost. We are not lost. This path leads to Tradar. Trust me. It'll just be a while, so no need to... Uh. It'll just be a while, so no need in get in getting in a rush. Hope your shoes are broken in. Hmm. <laughs> a little walking will do this kid some good. We'll have to spend another night out, but maybe we can hitch another ride if we're lucky. Cecil treads alongside me. His polished shoes, unfit for the gravelly grass sea path. Do you usually buff it up? Buff it like this? Usually, I guess. Whichever way I can get somewhere faster. It's too just too expensive to have a it's too expensive to have a chauffeur, chauffeur from town to town. It's not like not like Am Ambrose hasn't offered me one, but train is the best to go on, but it doesn't stop in every town. That's why we're going to travel to tra uh, Tradar. Tra tra Tradar. Tradir. <laughs> That's why we we've got to travel to Tradir on our own. I know that part. There's a train station in town. I managed to hop on it for a for a stop until they kicked me off when they found out I was alone. And yet you still continue yourself. Of course, I'm dead set on this. It's not like I can show back up empty-handed after running away. That's the spirit. They'll have ass things. But consider not throwing caution to the wind, especially around shady people. I should have taken that advice about you. Hmm. You gonna walk to tra Tradier and board the train all on your own? Look on the bright side. It's nice and sunny out here. No rain clouds in sight. Hot and sweltering out here. Too bad for you that your friend ran away at the end of summer. Another month or two and it'd be cooler. Too bad for me. I can't help but smile. He's dragging his feet like she used to. She got smart and realized I wouldn't wait on her if she, sho if she slowed down so I'd carry her some of the way. Of course, she was a lot younger than this kid. You know, some rich, rich people do this for fun. What? Staying outside with bugs? Yeah, actually, it's called camping. They pitch some traps together for a tent, make a fire, and sleep there. Some even go walking like, like this in the mountains and parks. They call it hiking. Some posh fellows out here with the bugs and critters? No, thank you. I'll stick to a warm armchair by the fireplace, thank you. Of course you would. We passed by several farms, farmhouses, and crop fields on the trail. It's peaceful out here. I've grown so used to a city you live in that it's hard to imagine owning a farm far away from factories, town, houses, carriages. 
would it be would it be a nice place to retire to be outlived by him mister I turn around to see Cecil bent over several feet behind me trying to catch his breath honestly forgot he was there slowing us down kid I guess my strides are longer than his it's going to take a lot a lot longer if I have to go with his pace an elderly man approaches from a nearby intersection and walks over to Cecil. Are you right, Sonny? Fine. You're not gonna get far trapping like that. Don't run. Walk. Huh? Here. The man hands Cecil a flask of water. To my surprise, Cecil accepts it and drinks up. <sighs> Thank you, mister. Cecil reaches up and hands back the man's flask. Oh. A flash of light dances on her hands and they touch. Vampire. What was that? The man recoils back and assumes a defensive stance. I step in between him and Cecil. What was that, Cecil? Uh, Cecil? I, I don't know. The man clasps his shaking hand, silently looking at the ground. Behind me, Cecil looks physically fine. I'll bet, I'll bet shaken up. I put my hand on my holster. You alright, sir? Mm. Sir? He opens his mouth, but not to speak. Things, things appear from beyond his lips. Blood art. Before you can move, I shoot a warning shot. <sighs> That's all it takes for the man to quickly walk off. Was he really a vampire? I can't believe there was one out this far. He, and he almost attacked us. <clears throat> no. That light startled him and must have hurt him. He was probably talk. He was probably thinking of self-defense. Listen. If you hear vampires start uttering the words blood arts, I tell them the other direction. I guess you could call it a spell of some sorts. It's abilities some vampires have learned that lets them use their blood for self defense. It's rare though, so you shouldn't have to worry about it much. But wait, I drink some water off a vampire. Am, am I going to turn into one now? I pat his head. It's going to take a lot more than that to turn you. How are you so sure? Trust me. Yeah, your 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 sister definitely. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Your sister something with vampires, yeah. She got tech, turned into one, I'm guessing. Then maybe went to a craze herself or maybe she was one really early on and maybe attacked you and you had to take her out. What is it, sir? Hmm? Hmm? It's going to be a full day of walking. Well, no time to waste. Chapter 7. The Emerald Water. That Emerald Water. Alright, guys. I think I'm going to leave it at Chapter 7. I think that was just that. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave it at Chapter 7. Uh, it's kind of late. Um, uh, I will get back to this game soon, hopefully, so there will be a part two with this game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed, and thank you for, thank you for joining me on this Cozy Corner episode. Hope you enjoyed this, uh, hope you enjoyed this visual novel so far. I sure have. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, I do hope, um to do more episodes of Cozy Corner. I do hope you guys are enjoying it. I am sure enjoying it. Uh, if you have any da uh, dating sims, visual novels, or even just cozy relaxing games you'd like to suggest me to play someday for this little series, please suggest it in the comments below. I would love to hear some new games I can maybe check out for this. Uh, I really love dating sims and visual novels, and cozy games are, like, cozy relaxing games are just kind of fun to play. 
So, yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.